Hi friends, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles and I have another one page wonder for us today. So this is using one 12 by 12 piece of paper and the one that I made is my prototype. I used a single side piece of Christmassy, it's sort of Christmassy, right? Wintery scrapbook paper. You can definitely use double sided. Because let me show you what I made and I ended up layering where the white showed with other paper. I used a bunch of the scrap Christmas kind of uh, papers that I've had left from kits I've been working with and a book page. So wherever you see book page, that's where the, the white on the back of the cardstock was showing. Isn't that a cute little tag? And because I did the belly band that way, I wanted it to just hang there. I love it. And then I did another belly band inside, again, book page, and then um, corner tuck pocket. So it's super easy. It's one of those where you start with the 12 by 12 paper and you end up with a, a, a small journal that measures four by six. And there's lots of variations on these kind. I've done this size before. I don't think I've done this exact fold. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna show you how I did this one and then give you another option where we can have a back flip. You know how I've done folios recently where you get to the end and then you close it and then surprise, there's an open on the back. We're gonna do that with this today too. Okay, in fact, I already have already have um, some some folded so I can show you because there's lots of varieties and I like having variety in my life uh, and our options with the same with the same basic fold so that's what we're gonna play with today I like I said I used a bunch of scraps I think I'm gonna use I'm gonna use these little houses and see how we do I think some of them are gonna end up upside down let's see what happens I'm gonna start with my paper straight the other papers I used didn't really have a direction to it um but I think what I'm going to use to decorate this one is I had where I'd done some printing of my retro Christmas paper kit and hadn't used all the pieces. And some of these were practice prints just on uh, copy paper, uh, copy weight paper, not even cardstock. So I'm going to play with that. I just thought that would be fun I'm trying to use up things that I have. So take your 12 by 12 piece of paper and we're going to score it on the 12 inch side, or it's the only sides it has, right? <laughs> at four and at eight inches. And I will put the measurements for you in the description, but this one's really easy. Score four and eight inches and then turn it and score it at six. So basically we have taken the paper into thirds and then in half, super easy. And I like to go ahead and fold carefully and make sure everything is getting in my way. Make sure everything is lining up nicely before I take my bone folder and really crease it down. I'm gonna try to be as neat as I can. So that was where I folded it in half and then we'll do the same with these folds. And we are going to then cut along uh, one of the score lines. So I'll show you that too. Great. This, a reminder as well, if you uh, are not someone, or if you've already had enough of Christmas crafts that we're just in the beginning of November, but if that's you, or if you don't do a lot of Christmas crafting, you can make this with any paper. I'm hoping my prototype even showed you, it doesn't even all have to come from the same kit or match. You really can take this idea and use whatever papers you like or the papers you have on hand. I haven't really thought through when you have a paper with directions, so I'm, I'm kind of glad I chose the houses so we can see what happens. So I just inked so you guys can hopefully see where I'm cutting. Later, if you want to ink, I love to ink, we'll go back and you know you can do some inking. But what we're going to do is we're going to cut out this score line right up to here. So the one at six, that's at six inches, and then if you're holding the paper this way, if this was your four inch and your eight inch, right up to that eight inch score line. 
And when I say cut it out, because my paper is a, like a cardstock weight, I am gonna go just a smidge to the right and a smidge to the left of the score line, the fold, and actually cut it out. Now it's really, really skinny, it's a sliver. I'll show you when I'm finished. You can, if you wanna try just you know, cutting right on the line, you can. And if your paper isn't as thick as mine, that might work. I just find it does a whole lot better if I if I cut it out, especially when I'm working with this kind of thicker paper. I have ink everywhere. <laughs> I, I, I've had a day with some ink. <laughs> okay, so yours should look like this. And you're gonna lay it down in your workspace with the pattern to, to the desk, so the white side up, and we are gonna fold these two flaps down, and again, your cut is here, and then we're gonna fold them down again. And I am gonna use my bone folder, to make sure everything is coming together, and the folds are working. Okay, so then you're gonna have one that looks like this, and then you're just gonna fold it in half. So this should be, and it is, the front of our little journal. That's pretty. Nothing's upside down yet, but it's going to be. <laughs> this is going to be that center page with the side load pocket. And then this is the page that opened up to have the three panels that I added, you know, the different pockets in the belly band to. My houses are upside down, and on the back they're upside down. If that really bothers you, I would say pick a paper that doesn't have direction to it. I'm happy that my cover is the correct direction and I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to probably layer some things and just not worry about it. So there you go when I decorate this one. To glue this together to make it the way that my prototype is, and I did this one, First, let me show you what you're want. You're gonna. I'm gonna use this one to show you. Is you're gonna want to, if you want this pocket, you start at this corner. So you would. I said I was gonna show you on this one, and I'm opening up this one. Would, this this is the corner you want to cut from. So you would open it up, and I just turn it, and we'll go ahead and cut it. Cut from that corner. And I'm fine with whatever size pocket I get, wherever my angle is. If that is really important to you, then take a ruler and a pencil and draw your line before you cut it and then cut on the line, okay? So now we have that nice pocket there. I'm not gonna worry about showing you with this one since I decided to just go ahead and go for it with, with the one we made together. To make our side load pocket, I do like a notch here. There we go. So to make this a side load pocket, we're gonna add glue to this right here that's kind of along the spine and the bottom. This is going to close it so that your pocket doesn't stay open. So I'm gonna use my wet white glue and I'm gonna add a thin bead right along this left hand side and along the bottom. And if you're new to my channel, I'll tell you about my favorite glue and then we're just gonna carefully close it up and make sure as much as possible everything's nice and even. Uh, this is Line Co brand uh, PVA glue and I get it on Amazon. There's different bottles and sizes that you can get and then I just fill up the little bottles and I'll have my Amazon storefront linked for you in the description. If you do end up clicking and then per making a purchase, Amazon does pay me a few pennies because it's an affiliate link. We're supposed to tell you guys that. And then, um, but it's at no cost to you. Okay, get that out of the way. All right, so we have our first page. Not gluing this yet, but when we're ready, we'll glue here and along the bottom. I'm gonna layer some paper there first. We'll layer paper, and then it opened this way. Now, what I wanted to show you 
was like a variation or some variation. So one variation, we everything basically is the same, but when we get to this place, we could fold it back this way. All I did was fold that last page back so you get here and you have a, a two page spread and we can add pockets and things. And then you close your journal and then you're gonna have that surprise open here. And that's just something I like doing and I think it's fun. I'm going to show you another one that I did and I've already glued it together. So this one for the cover, instead of making the pocket, I opened it up and had that three page flip spread on the front. So there you go. And then instead of a side pocket, I did a top load pocket. Now what I did have to do is I had to turn it upside down and once you turn it upside down, you'll see you also have to flip your, your front and back cover a little bit, but it's not confusing if you just do it. And then instead of just adding glue along the spine and the 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 bottom, we did it to the bottom because it was open to the bottom, you'll just add glue along the spine and then along this crease line, leaving it open at the top. And then now you have a top load. So cover, three page spread, top load pocket page with a two page spread and then I did that back flip. Or again, you could come this way. Lots of choices, very similar, but depending on your mood, different choices. You can also, when you're doing your layering, add a variety of different types of pockets, which is what I'm gonna do. So what I have to decide is which one do I want to decorate? And I really was looking forward to decorating the one on the green paper. And this one is just like our prototype. So I think that's the one we'll decorate together. The decorating is basically the same, no matter which variety you choose, just you choose your style of pockets, your papers, and how you wanna fold. So again, it just gave you a couple of things to think about maybe when you're folding yours up. Or you can make several and they could all be a little different. All right, so before I glue this pocket down, I do wanna layer some papers. And I told you guys I had some test prints. Well, from doing the other one, oh, and see this is just copy paper. These panels end up measuring pretty much four by six, each of these panels. I cut my layering paper just to save a little time ahead of time and I cut each piece instead of cutting it four by six I cut it three and seven eighths and five and seven eighths so just a smidge under just a smidge under four a smidge under six and they should layer on any of these panels that I would like them to to get us started to kind of get rid of the white and then I can add other other Pretties, pretties on top. I also have, this is actually a cardstock weight, and some of the solid papers that might be pretty too. And then I could use these for something else. I didn't cut these, but I could tear. I could tear a couple. I think this kind of rusty red color would look pretty under on this panel, under this pocket. So I am going to just, my other cutter is on the other side of the room. So I am going to, I told you it was just three and seven eighths in which, so one, two, three. This doesn't have a seven eighths, so I'm just gonna go a smidge under four, just because I don't want it to be larger than the panel and I want everything to still fold up nicely. One, two, three, four, five, six, same thing. I don't really have that seven eighths mark, so I'm just gonna go a smidge shorter. Okay, and I don't usually, sometimes I will print on a, just a copy weight paper so that for journal pages, but a lot of times I use the same 90 pound Nina cardstock weight paper even for my journal pages because I like the pages to have a little more heft because I tend to add a lot of pockets, ephemera, flip outs, those types of things in my journals and my big journals. So I like having the paper that's this weight. 
So it's still, it's still flexible, but especially if you layer it up, it has nice, a nice weight to it. Now I didn't need a piece that was completely, that would completely cover this panel because you're only going to see that part. I could have torn it shorter. I didn't really think about it. I'm just going to go ahead and glue it down. I'm not going to worry about it. We're going to just glue it down and make it look pretty. I tell you guys all the time that I love this kind of crafting and I do. I like having little mini journals to work in. I love making ephemera. But, you know, it's just fun to have pretty papers to work with. And knowing we could, again, we can all start with basically the same supplies, the same paper kits or whatever. And depending on how we choose to layer and which, which pieces we choose and how we fold it, it could look completely different. And I love that, it makes me happy. So this cardstock that I'm using, the scrap of cardstock is from a paper pack that I got at Hobby Lobby. And I think I got this one this year. So there's some pretties, pretty pretties, pretty papers. Some of them have some fun neutral, you know, kind of the neutrals. So a little muted, not super bright. Glue on that portion of the pocket and along the bottom. And we now have a nice, kind of the, the folder style pocket. Now I did go ahead and notch this. I'm gonna pick one of these just because I think it'll be fun. And we open this up to see this nice pattern. And I think what I can do is I'm gonna just, I'm gonna make a quick mark with my pencil approximately at the center and hope I can cut a notch that's gonna work. And this is really thin paper and I know my punch. It does better punching out thicker things. So I'm gonna put this piece of cardstock sitting on my desk underneath it just to help it, the punch work better. Hoping that depth will be the right depth. Yay! And again, I could have layered this panel before I glued the pocket together like I did over here and punched it together. So if, if you wanna do that so that your little notch is easier to punch out, do that first. Layer your paper and then just do one punch with both layers. All right, a little bit of ink. That's gonna be pretty. And what size punch? I used a one and a half inch on that. On that one, just because that was the one I grabbed the first, or to begin with. The one that was the easiest to grab. So if you're still with me, I hope you are. <laughs> uh, if you're still with me, leave me a comment. Tell me how you're doing, what you think of this project, if you plan to make one. Let me know if you have any. I can't promise I can honor all requests, but if you have some ideas or some requests, let me know if things you'd like to see or my take on something. I If I use an idea from another crafter, uh, I do try to give credit. Sometimes things, uh, and, the, and the reason I mention that is I don't know where I saw this, but this particular fold is very, very common. So I know I've seen it multiple times and it's not necessarily my original idea, but how I'm hopefully sharing it with you guys and giving you ideas of how to use it and different options with it maybe is a little unique. So if you have seen things other crafters have done or you would like my take or it's a technique you'd like to see, I am happy to attempt to help you if I can figure it out. Okay, I'm happy, I'm liking this. So now I want to pick some papers and what I've got to decide is do I want to go like with some of the neutrals and then use some of the pattern papers or things to decorate them with or do I want to do maybe two in the green and then maybe the middle one I could do like with one of these ornaments that might be fun 
Let's do that. I want to put this ornament right here. You can already tell I want to put the ornament right there. So I'm just going to do a tiny bit of inking. And then we may do a skinny belly band. Or maybe we'll do a little flippy something here. I definitely don't want to cover up my ornament. I want to be able to see it even if I have to move something out of the way to see it. And this doesn't require a lot of glue. It's not gonna go anywhere. Okay, and I didn't ink, I should have before I started right here, just because it would be easier for me to see as well. But I haven't inked on those score lines. And that's where I needed to nestle that in. So again, all of these panels measure that four by six. So it just makes everything pretty simple when you're when you're crafting and if you don't like to do a ton of measuring which is me I like things that are simple I am going a smidge less than four inches wide and I am going a smidge less than six tall I just realized there would have been an easier way for me to tear this. If I had been thinking, we could have done the six inch first <laughs> and then the four. But again, a smidge under six. One, two, three, four. Here we go. And if you don't have one of these grids, again, you can find these kind of, and they're coming kind of different colors and different things, but on Amazon, at like Joann's, Hobby Lobby, Michael's, places like that. One, two, three, four, five, six. But I think you can also, there's some companies, I haven't seen it lately, but I haven't looked for it, where they have the pads of paper that are the grid paper, the big ones, like desk, desk size, whatever. And I was thinking that that might be something I might think about, depending on the colors available, because then you can work on one, and then when it gets icky flip it over or use it for something else, you know, use the paper. You know me, I'm thinking about how can I use the paper, but then have a fresh sheet. <laughs> and I still have glitter stuck to my mat and I go through, even though I try to keep it kind of clean, I, I go through at least one of these a year. They, uh, it's like one of the self healing ones. I don't know it really heals but anyway it gets little grooves and things in there this one is still in pretty good shape and you can flip them over but I've already I think I've already used this side I'll have to look at that but if I find some of that paper to put on your workspace that also gives you the measuring lines I'll let you know I guess I haven't looked for it if you guys know what I'm talking about or know where to find it let me know because again I haven't thought about it in a while Oh, I love this together. Of course, this is the green that coordinates with this paper, but it is pretty. All right, that fits. I'm just checking because when you tear paper, and even though I tried to go a little bit smaller, this one was almost the exact size of the panel, but I think I can make it fit. I can always take my scissors if I have to, if I've got a little smidge hanging over. What I don't want is to get this in the, in the crease line because it'll impact the journal folding up. But that looks good, it's not hanging over. So we're doing well. And this is where it just takes a little more time if you use the scrap of paper that's only, you know, only has the design on one side. Unless, again, you can have the white. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the white. You just add your tag, your pockets and things right to the white and keep on going. But it does give it a fun look too when you start layering the papers. So it's a little different, but some of those pretty papers I use with all the plaids and the holiday things would be pretty. The Cartabella papers would be really pretty. All right, so we have one, two, flip. And again, we could do that, but I'm not going to on this one. I'm gonna keep the cover with all the green and you can kind of see where I glued those two pieces together, but it looks nice and neat and everything is coming together. 
So now I want to think about what types of pockets I want to put here and here and what type of pocket or something do I want to put there. And I have some of my Christmas quotes that come with this kit that I think would be fun to pepper in here along with some of the images. I think, do I, do I? I think I had even the page of, here they are, of the little like little journaling cards. And these might be fun to decorate and put in the pockets, but to even decorate the front of the journal with. This might be pretty, let's see. Yeah, I might put that on the front. We'll see here in a minute. I took one of the freebies of the Santa and Friends kit and did a little bit of a fussy cut of him around and I think he turned out really cute and I love that button. That's just a button I got, again, at Hobby Lobby. You can, their buttons are always on discounts. You gotta read the sign, I can't remember. But I got that pack of um, red and white buttons and there's plaids and stripes and polka dots on them, whatever. I don't know, for like 50 cents. It was a real, and that was fairly recent. It was this, this year. So whenever I am in Hobby Lobby, especially, I look in their button section. They have kind of the buttons that are more in the craft section, the buttons in the sewing section. I look at all of them. So you can usually find some fun things. Oh, goodness. Okay. What do I want to do? I started inking cards instead of thinking. I also want to do something on this page, but not sure what. Let's look, let's work on this. Let's think about what I want the pockets to be on here. And again, this isn't the thickest of paper. And that's kind of what I pulled out. So I do have some of the scraps from just my Christmas crafting I've been doing, laying out, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I want to add another pattern from that in here or not. What I could do, I just had an idea. I said I want to put a belly band somewhere. I really, I think I'm just going to leave this. We might decorate or put a quote or a word or something. I'm just going to leave that. I'm really enjoying looking at it. Let's turn this into a belly band. And to make it thick enough, I am just going to fold it on itself and see how we do. Whoa. Yeah, I didn't get it perfect. I could have scored it gently um, or marked where I wanted to fold it, but I think that'll look cute as a belly band. I'm going to trim it so it's just a touch shorter. And again, I could have cut it, but because I wanted the extra paper, I'm kind of happy with this. And we're not going to see the back, but I'm going to just glue this together. Get one side over, and then the other side. And this isn't a super lightweight copy paper. This is like a 22 pound, so... It's not the, the thinnest, thinnest of just copy paper, but now it has, it has plenty of heft to be a belly band. Look at that. And I'm almost thinking it opens this way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually make it not a belly band. <laughs> I'm gonna make it a tuck because I kinda don't wanna cover up those berries. I'm gonna just set it in here and I'm gonna add glue not just to the top and bottom like I would for a belly band, but along this one side and the top and bottom. And we're just gonna turn it into a little side tuck on this page. So instead of it being a pass through, we'll just tuck something in here. All right, I'm gonna let that dry before I play with it too much. Okay, pockets for here. And same thing, unless I use the green, which is the cardstock weight, which I used to layer with. I could have layered with the other one and had the green for a pocket. Let's see, maybe I can do the same thing. Let's fold this paper. I'm kind of thinking I want the bell and the ornament, just like that. I'm gonna tear it off. There. 
And I'm going to glue this together. That would have been cute too with the tree in the ornament or the bell in the ornament. I'm going to go with the tree in the ornament. And that way too, my where I glue this together, I don't, everything is seamless. There's no seams to accidentally get caught on. Yeah. It's a little short maybe for where I would want to the width of a pocket, I might want it a little bit bigger, but I'm gonna just put it in here. And like these cards, if I'm careful with my glue, they'll definitely fit. It'll work. So let me glue this together. So this piece will be sandwiched in there. So it need a lot of glue, and then we'll glue this down. And what I meant by there's no seam, if I turned it this way to have these, it's possible whatever I put in the pocket could get caught on that layer the way I folded it. And this way, I just think it'll be a little more secure. All right, so I'm gonna hold it by this side because I'm gonna keep it open. And I'm gonna add glue to the two sides. Again, if you have printed on cardstock, you don't need to be going to these measures. I could have also gotten just a, a craft piece of cardstock, a white piece of cardstock, whatever color, right? And layered the paper I wanted to be on the front of the pocket on. So again, there, there's always options. And hopefully I was careful enough with my glue. Yeah, that there's enough room in there to put one of these journaling cards. All right, so for this side, let's do a, I was thinking a triangle, a um, an angled pocket. Oh, I printed this one at a different percentage just to get some different sizes, and then I didn't use it. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to think. Let's do this. I'm gonna fold this over. Again, an attempt, ah, that works, to make my paper a little thicker. I don't really need the part here. I could cut it off, but I'm gonna just cut it about right here give it a little bit extra and we'll cut that off okay so I think that'll be a cute pocket yeah now I get to have a bell so that's good always you know in my mind Christmas bells are, are nice my mother had a little bell that was a kind of a Christmas decoration. She always put it somewhere in our kitchen when we were kids growing up. It was on a pretty, a, a beautiful, like a velvet ribbon. And I guess it was supposed to be like one of the bells from Santa's sleigh. And I always loved it. And somehow she had us completely convinced on Christmas Eve, once it got to be about time, you know, we should be getting ready for bed so Santa could come, that part of the magic is when Santa's sleigh got close, that bell would ring. And we'd be sitting there and then the bell would be ringing. And my brother and I would shoot up and, you know, kiss everybody goodnight and go running to our bedrooms. Cause we, you know, were afraid if we were awake, Santa wouldn't stop at our house. It was a great way to make us go to bed. I don't know how she always made that bell ring. I'm sure there were times some one of the other adults in the house that we weren't paying attention to was in there ringing the bell. Uh, yeah, I don't think she could have convinced. We had, we had a dog. We didn't have a cat. I don't think she could have trained the dog to do it. I'm not quite sure how she did it. And unfortunately, she did not tell me. Um, even when I became a mother, she did not tell me that secret. She also had a way of putting all these presents under the tree with no names on them and knowing which present was for which person. And she never would tell me that either. I always thought, well, it has to, it has to do with like the bow or how she fold because she would look at the package and kind of look at it and then hand it to the right person. I don't know. She she was amazing. She loved Christmas. <laughs> Okay, this is coming together nicely. Let's decorate the front. And I do think I saved this one. And I'm wondering if it'll look better with a little bit of a, a layer underneath. I don't know if it's necessary, but I kind of like it. So do I want to make a complete mat 
you know, and cut it just with a maybe a quarter of an inch around, or do I want to use this one and kind of offset it like I had? I think we'll do that. We'll offset it. And I'm also thinking, let's make a closure. Because I didn't make a closure for this one, but that'll be fun. I can make a closure. So you give that a little bit of thought. I did put that just de that's just a decorative button, but I might be able to find something. Let's see. Oh, I just I don't know where the little bag of buttons went, but that one must have fallen out and it's right there. So let me see. What is on this side? It's this pocket. I could I could sew this button on. The little red the the little red stripes kind of look cute. And I could tuck that and tuck it right there. Yeah, I like that. And then we can just put some twine or something around it. So what are we gonna do? Um get everything about where I want it. Okay, so the first thing to do will be let's glue our little mini collage together. And I may even, I haven't gotten there, I may still add one of the Christmas quotes. There may not be room on the front, but definitely on the inside we will add some. Now, before I stick this down, I'm going to pick that button back up. Make sure it's gonna fit. Yeah. And these berries, even though this is from the actual scrapbook paper, it almost matches. So that's kind of fun. All right. And again, we'll have a little bit of thread coming through on this pocket, but I haven't decorated this side yet. So if it bothers me, we will just cover it up. All right, I had not necessarily planned to sew a button, but let's find a needle. I think I'll use, I want to use that. Have, I think I'm going to use this neutral thread because that is what I have here on my desk. And I'm not going to go rummaging around right now for thread. I promise you guys I do not walk around all the time with this ink on my hands. Sometimes when I'm working and I realize my hands look so dirty, I'm like, oh my goodness. I just, I'm not the best. I'm not the best at closing my ink pad. There we go. And I'm not the best uh, at keeping it off of my fingers. Okay. Tying a knot. And my fingers are a little dry, so it's not grabbing it the best. Okay, now we're going to sew. I really like these stripes. I'm going to try to keep the button straight. And I just use the button to help me see where I need to put my hole. Whoa. So I'll just go ahead and get this threaded through first. There we go. So I've asked you guys before and some of you have shared and I love when you guys do that about your your memories like did you like to craft when you were kids or your um, Christmas memories and it's hard for me to think about like Christmas or Thanksgiving but Christmas without thinking about my mom. I'm one of those people that's really lucky I got a good one. I got a good one. Like I said, she definitely liked to make Christmas special uh, when my brother and I were kids and really her whole life. And she definitely loved Christmas with my children. She had this, we still have it. Uh, it's a, I think it was a Hallmark item. You know, the old Hallmark. Do they still have Hallmark stores? I'm not sure if they do or not. But you would go to Hallmark and they would have little, Christmas ornaments. They had their, yeah, they do have Hallmark stores, or they still make the Hallmark ornaments. But the, the collector's ornaments, I'm not doing a great job with this knot, but that's okay. We'll just cover this up. And anyway, it was a snowman. You have to tell me if anybody else had ones. And it had a little piano. 
and you'd push the button and, it, and the snowman would wiggle and then do all these different Christmas songs. And the first year she brought it over to our house when she and my dad arrived on Christmas Eve, maybe the day before Christmas Eve, they usually came a little bit before Christmas. I would say my son was four, my daughter was two maybe. I'm going to just tie this under here gently so I don't pop that button off. I mean, it's still, it's sewn on, but it's still on to paper. So I want to be careful and not pull it out. And I'm going to trim it short. And then I'm going to wrap some pieces. And so she, anyway, she walked in the door with the snowman playing the piano. And so the Christmas music was coming from his piano and his little body was wiggling. And my son, Daniel, thought that was the best thing. We have old home videos of him just with his hands on his face and squealing. And he was so excited to see his grandparents and, you know, Christmas, the whole thing. And so that she left it to be um, packed up with all of my Christmas decorations. So each year we would have the snowman out and the children loved it and they still do. And my daughter's so funny about it. She, she doesn't let anyone push the button to make him play the piano except like maybe twice a year because she's afraid he's going to die one day. And he probably is. He's, he's getting pretty old. But he'll still look cute even if his music, if he doesn't play. All right, so now let's look and see what else we want for some type of a decoration. I do think I want to cover that up, so maybe just a strip of paper or something to make that look pretty. Let me see what I have on hand. I'm thinking I want it to be the to be able to be at least you know the height. Ooh, this is going to be cute. We're going to cut out this portion of this tree and glue it on. So not, not the whole piece, but just to cover up that thread and to give us something pretty to look at. I'm not going to take the poinsettia. There we go. Yeah, and there'll be a little bumpy under there. That's okay. No one's going to care. Now I get to open my ink pad again. There we go. Sometimes I can't remember what I've talked about in which video and, and, and what, what I've shared with you guys because I tell you guys stuff and... I don't usually go back and listen to my videos again after I've recorded them. And then I talk to my kids and I talk to my husband and I talk to my friends. And I'm like, did I tell them that? Or did I tell that to, did I tell that to Megan? Did I tell that to Jennifer? Who did I tell that to? So that looks nice. I like that. All right. And then again, we can have a whole lot of fun if we want to making ephemera and different pieces that can go in all of these pockets. For right now, I want to stick. I just think that'll make a really fun size and add some ribbon or something to it in that pocket. And this is a pretty deep pocket, so it too will benefit from something a little taller. I'm going to take this strip. This is just one of the pieces that I cut to make some of those panels. And if I glue that together, that's going to make a really cute tag, right? Or even put it onto some card stock so it has a little more heft. That one's cute there. I think this size works. This is where my printer went all inky weird on me. And I, it actually, I don't think it's the printer's fault. I think what happened was I put a piece of paper. We can also put cards in this orientation. And I may do that. It, it was a little wrinkled, the corner of the paper in the package. It just came that way. And I have found that they, my, my printer will then drop a lot of ink if the paper isn't smooth. I don't know if that makes sense. Ah, so I did run a clean, like a clean cycle. I don't think that's what you call it, a maintenance cycle. <laughs> 
on my printer and then printed some other things and it was fine. So I'm not too worried about it, but it didn't make me happy at the time. Now these would look better, of course, if I layered them, added ribbons, did all the fun things, but I'm not going to right this second. Let's find, how about this? May you never be too grown up to search the skies on Christmas Eve. I think in one of my videos I read this one out before. But again, this kind of is in line with my mother Sally figuring out a way to ring reindeer or Santa's sleigh bell when we were kids and keep us fooled. Maybe we weren't fooled. Maybe Santa really was ringing that bell. All right, let me just make sure do I want where I want it. I think I'm going to put it right here. So we get to that back panel, since it's the only one I'm putting on right now, because I'm about to stop. <laughs> It'll be right there. That'll look cute. And we're going to call it a day. I'm sure I will go back. I may. I don't know. I may go back and add some ribbons to the tags and things, or I may just leave this nice and skinny. It has this one button, but I may leave it nice and skinny so that it can be mailed easily. So, a little bit different. Definitely looks different because we used a different style of papers and colors and things. And this one, we did this twine closure on. So, Anyway, I hope you like it. I hope you will do a one-page wonder and use whatever you have on hand and have fun. Have fun. Please let me know. And until I see you guys in the next video, have a great day. Thanks.